Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is uh, the uh, information about the Healthcare Information Technology Online Program here at Hofstra University Continuing Education. Uh, what we'll do is we'll basically go through a brief presentation, and then uh, at the end we will uh, have some questions uh, that we will be uh, answering. So to get started, so why study healthcare information technology? Well, because the demand for healthcare and healthcare-related services is growing at twice the rate of the national economy, with uh, the large amount of investment that's done from government as well as from startup companies, they are looking for people who have a broad array of knowledge in the domain of healthcare as well as technology, and those who can put it together are highly sought after. Overall, industry is on track to create about 6 million new jobs by the end of 2020 in a variety of areas, including healthcare information exchanges, uh, integration of systems, electronic health records, and data analytics and warehousing. Uh, this is due to the fact that people are living longer and demanding better care. Uh, their payers are looking to save money through quality of care, so it's fundamentally changing the way health care is delivered in the United States. We use technology to enhance diagnosis and treatments in a wide variety of areas, including data analytics. We increase the connectivity between providers and the consolidation in the industry forces uh, technologists to be engaged in the activities. And the new regulations are forcing massive changes with every stakeholder, that is, the government, the payers, the public, which are the patients, as well as the providers. So these technologies are involved in every aspect of patient care, from initial treatment and diagnosis, all the way through quality of care and managed care services. So why an online education? We made the decision to move our program online to accommodate the demands of students who are working in their fields of either healthcare or technology or otherwise. The benefits are it will allow for flexibility of schedule, allowing you to uh, take the classes at your leisure for the, on the weekends, after work, or even before or during some break times. This will also allow for more student-centric learning, allowing you to dive into areas that you're more interested in and explore things further. Uh, it also facilitates on-demand learning. When you want to learn is when you will learn. And it, if you're in a more comfortable setting, if you are more uh, stress-free, if you will, uh, you will find that your learning experience is enhanced. And it also enables students to explore three synchronous means, which basically means that you're able to work with other students and collaborate, not necessarily needing to meet face-to-face, -face, but through a dialogue that occurs asynchronously through discussion boards, as well as to get information from places such as YouTube uh, and other uh, resources. Broader student participation will yield diverse perspectives and higher quality of education. So by us moving the program online, we're hoping to bring in more students with more diverse backgrounds and exchange the information in a more timely fashion. So some of the regulations that are in place that are causing the change in the industry, uh, we've all heard of the Patient Affordability Care Act, which is known uh, in the news as Obamacare, and it's the fundamental change for the industry. It is causing a lot of payers as well as providers to change the way they do business in order to meet the demands of the regulation. It increases the number of people that are covered by over 10% and increases the amount of services that are to be covered across a wide variety of uh, medical services, including cross-boundary domains, which would include things like being able to provide insurance over state boundaries. Government establishment of healthcare exchanges for patients to obtain health insurance, these are known as health insurance exchanges, allows individual people to uh, acquire health insurance from a number of payers uh, using electronic means. The American Recovery and Investment Act from 2009 also allocated $19 billion in stimulus payments to hospitals and providers for electronic health record implementation. And this is currently underway, and there's even discussions of additional stimulus money being provided to both, payer, both providers from a hospital perspective as well as physicians for additional support in terms of their electronic health record implementation and analytics. The requirements for the health information exchanges, which is where clinical information is transferred between patients using technology such as HL7, are established and patients' records can be stored in these central repositories so that if they move from one place to another or change providers, their information is easily accessible by providers. Additional requirements for HIPAA and changes to the coding systems as we move further into ICD-10 are placing strain on healthcare professionals because they need to be able to adapt their systems accordingly in order to meet the ICD-10 codes, which are much more complicated. Furthermore, once those are implemented, 
they will need to be analyzed, the statistics will need to be analyzed more readily for payment distribution. So some of the employment opportunities that we find. Well, when from providers, we're talking about the implementation of EHR systems uh, and integrating their other uh, clinical systems along with the integration of billing systems, say for ICD-10 coding, uh, and data analytics for quality of care as more demand on quality of care is being placed on the providers. Uh, from a payers, they have to meet the regulations and they have to constantly be aware of the changing regulations, so that will require changes as well, including the ICD-10 coding system, which will also require specific, uh, which will require a massive change in the way the payers' adjudication systems are handled. The government requires additional reporting for regulations in order to maintain compliance and auditing and individuals who are aware of how those payment systems and electronic health record systems are uh, created and integrated are being sought after by the government. And software companies who are trying to provide solutions in a wide variety of areas, uh, including uh, electronic, the, the electronic health records with companies such as Allscripts uh, and Epic from an EHR from data warehousing opportunities such as Altruista uh, and other types of companies that are providing ancillary services from a software perspective. So some of the key initiatives for these companies, again, are the EHR implementation as we've spoken about, is a critical one for providers, both physicians as well as hospitals. These are very large implementations, usually take many years and are never really fully complete. The ICD-10 coding, which is one of the biggest changes for the uh, insurance, insurance industry, where the coding for diagnosis and treatments are required to be properly coded for billing. Most companies, uh, providers and physicians require accurate coding to ensure that they get the highest payment for services rendered. And data analytics slash big data, uh, all stakeholders are requiring to pull data from their repositories so that they can analyze it appropriately, so they can improve their overall margins, increase quality of care to meet regulatory uh, standards, as well as look for new opportunities and acquire new patients and new treatments. And telemedicine, uh, allowing uh, remote medicine from various sources where patients can remain at home, especially for long-term chronic care, and be treated by nurses and physicians, or uh, having information sent to the physicians uh, regarding their vital signs such as blood pressure or medication intake. So the other types of healthcare jobs that are out there, more specifically from a technology perspective, would include project managers, business analysts, people in quality assurance, uh, specifically data analysis, and architects. From the technology standpoint, more importantly, database administrators, data warehousing experts, people who know integration, security, server administration, and network administration. The entire domain of healthcare requires a significant amount of expertise and a significant number of people. And our goal in this program is to provide you with a very strong foundation that will enable you to understand the healthcare domain as well as the technology domain. So our certificate basically is designed to give your, the students that particular edge in getting these healthcare jobs. We work with the students to blend the healthcare IT topics as well as uh, provide the practical experience in the clinical environment. Our students basically have received internships, however we are not doing those internships in exchange, we are focused on providing the students with their own electronic healthcare record system using open source software called Open EMR and allowing them to build the data warehouse throughout the classes. So their actual experience will come from the servers that we provide, the server instance that we provide you. Over 80% of our students have successfully completed all the requirements and have found employment in the industry. So what does our curriculum uh, entail? Well, there are two prerequisite courses. You can choose one of the two. Those who have a high technology background would choose the Introduction to Healthcare Studies, and those who have the programming, uh, the technology, I'm sorry, those who have the healthcare would take the Java programming. So you get a little bit more of the technology or a little bit of the healthcare, depending on which domain you actually came from. The required courses are uh, eight courses. Uh, database management, electronic medical records, healthcare, data warehousing, all of these are available online in terms of their descriptions and I'll give you a brief review here. So the Java programming and introduction to healthcare studies are the first two courses. These are basically introduction to healthcare to understand basic anatomy and understand the clinical knowledge needed if you were to work in a clinical setting. The Java programming class is designed to just provide people with a, an introductory level uh, development background. Database management systems are critical in terms of analytics, and so we provide this course 
so that you can understand how relational models are created, understand how analytical models are created, and make sure that they have a good foundation in terms of running databases. The EMR implementation uh, and HIT are basically two courses that are designed to give you the overview of the individual systems that are found inside of both providers, payers, uh, both physicians, hospitals, and then payers as well. Uh, it teaches students how, to, how the technologies impact the various uh, stakeholders, understand how they are integrated. From the provider perspective, you're actually going to be given some information on electronic medical records and how they're implemented, and then you'll actually have an instance of Open EMR uh, that you'll be able to work with as well. The analytics course is designed to provide an overview of data warehousing, how, those how the data is actually moved into a, an online analytical processing cube, uh, how ETL works, what type of things are uh, government regulators looking for, and how that information can be pulled out adequately and expeditiously from the EMR systems or from payer systems. The security course is designed to provide an overview of how security, encryption, firewalls are all integrated within a provider or a payer setting. The Fundamentals of Health Informatics is a course that emphasizes how computers are used to solve these data-related problems, specifically around healthcare data, data storage, retrieval, imaging, telemedicine, and other management of healthcare information. What differentiates this course from the analytics course is when we deal with informatics, we're talking about specific particular solutions as opposed to just the technology in uh, creating data warehouses such as the star schema uh, and the um, other uh, related topics with regards to data warehousing. The IT projects course, Process and Controls and Quality, is designed to provide the student with uh, an understanding of the regulatory standards, good project management within the healthcare field, and put into practice exactly what they've learned throughout the variety of courses. Uh, here are a list of instructors. Myself, I teach some of the courses, as well as Lorianne Koleski, who's had over 10 years with Emblem Health. Uh, Sharon Boison, who has basically dealt with a lot of the anatomy courses for us, and Jack Cronin, who is certified project management. All of us together uh, put together these courses specifically around uh, ensuring that you get the best quality education around those uh, topics. So we'll open the floor for a few questions right now. Okay. Uh, the first question is, is it possible to complete this program while working full-time? Uh, the answer is yes, it is possible to complete it working full-time. This is an online program, uh, and you get to work uh, the program at your leisure. The way the online program works is there are a series of videos uh, and some course materials that are provided within uh, the online Blackboard system. There are discussion groups uh, that you participate, and at the end of each module you have an assessment in the form of a quiz or a small test, and once you complete those, you open up the next modules, and at the end, you have a more of a comprehensive type of uh, exam. Uh, the next question, is this a good program for nurses? Uh, the answer is yes. You, If you are a nurse or you're in the clinical field, you'll gain a better understanding for the various technologies and how they are uh, implemented within a particular setting, more specifically your setting. Uh, you will get a little bit more technology than you would have had in just a, a standard course, uh, and you'll see how it's applied in this particular domain. Um, let's see, the okay, next question here. I have experience in IT but not in healthcare. Do I need to take uh, courses to learn about healthcare? Well, the way this is designed is specifically around that, where the first course, you'll, if you're more IT-centric, you'll take the first course in healthcare anatomy, so you'll understand the terms of uh, the blood pressure, systolic, diastolic, you'll understand cholesterol readings, you'll understand some basic anatomical terms that will help you in terms of handling uh, issues with regards to the electronic health records or data analytics. As you go through the other courses, you'll obviously be exposed to those terms and you'll gain a better understanding for them as well. Uh, the estimated time to complete the program, the next question, is approximately eight months. It's broken up into about two semesters for the core courses, and then right, right before that is the preliminary course of the prerequisite that you would take. Uh, we have a, another question. Uh, do you run courses over the summer? It's really the eight months. It's a similar question. Um, it's an online program, and you, you have a limited time once you start the program to actually uh, take that uh, 
uh, take. Uh, will, will the webinar be available on the website? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we will send an email to all attendees on how to access the webinar uh, from the website, which will be available. Uh, let's see. A uh, couple, two quick questions here. Is it too late to register? No, it is not too late. You can register. There's still plenty of time. Um, you can register by contacting the main office. And are there payment plans? The answer is might be yes, but you need to call Sabrina at 463-7200 and talk about the actual payment uh, plans. I'd love to answer more questions on the uh, financial piece, but I'm not an expert in that. I'm an expert in the classes. Um, can you exempt courses if we have experience? All of that is really based on the um, on the experience. We'd have to call the uh, you have to call the main office, and we'd have to have the discussion. It's um, not usually done. Uh, it's really going to depend, and there may be other options or other alternatives um, if you need or think you require an exemption on that. Um, let's see. Are there any other questions out there? Okay. All right. If there's no other questions, I uh, hope this webinar was helpful. If you have any other questions, um, you can basically visit the website at ce.hofstra.edu slash healthcare IT, or you can call the number at 516-463-7200, or you can contact, uh, let's see, <laughs> Uh, four six three seven two five zero as well. Okay, thank you very much for your time, and have a wonderful day.